What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be doing something that I think is long overdue on the channel. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to be teaching you how to make adjustments on defense. I think this is really, really important. It's really, really important that you understand this um, just because you need to know exactly what everything is going to do so that whenever I tell you to put your linebacker on a purple or I tell you to put your linebacker in a yellow or hot blitz your linebacker or whatever, you're going to be able to know how to do that. So this is going to be a little bit of a tutorial in preparation for Madden 22. This is one of the things I think is really, really important. It's just understanding the basic controller, um, especially when it comes to quick adjusting. So if you've never quick adjusted or never like hot routed or anything, uh, I think this is going to be a really important video for you. And so uh, real quick, I'm just going to flip the... I'm just going to flip sides here. And while I'm doing that, I want to encourage you, if you've not subscribed to the channel yet, to go ahead and do that. My channel is all about helping people become better Madden players. Every single day on YouTube, I post offensive tips, defensive tips. I also study the best players in the world and kind of break down what they do and why they do it. So if you want to get better, I just want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button at the uh, uh, subscribe button down below. I've got a defensive guide out as well if you want to get that. It's basically a... Um, a written and video guide that will teach you everything that I know about defense. So if you want to get my, my favorite defensive guide of the year, uh, I just released it. So first things first, when it comes to coaching adjustments, and again, that defensive guide is down in the description uh, if you want to get it. First things first is coaching adjustments. So this is something that's really important. Um, and you see here, I mean, you just hit X to bring it up. And this is basically some things that you can do um, that will do different things. For example, auto flip. Um, what this means is like, let's say someone comes out and trips tight end and your and they, but they flip their trips tight end. Auto flip will automatically flip your play with whatever the, the core alignment is that the offense comes out in. So typically we want to leave this on. Auto alignment, this is uh, three different alignments that you can choose from. You can go from default to base align to man align. Uh, man align is going to make everything, um, your defenders will align according to their base formation uh, positions if they are in base align. What that means is like the, the players are going to align exactly like they look on the, um, they're going to align exactly like they look on the pre-snap play call menu. So this is good because it, it's actually really good against compression sets. Like if you're defending compression, this is a good way to defend it. Uh, man align. Defenders will align according to their man coverage assignment. So if you were in two man under and you just came out and were in man, this is what that would. This is what a, a man align will do. So what this can do is you could come out and like cover three, but you come out in man align, and that means that it's going to give the illusion that you're in man coverage. So it's just a way to disguise uh, your alignment. Most people, myself included, like to play by this right here, which is default alignment. Defenders will align according to their default alignment rules. Um, this is just kind of the basic deal. So you're going to get a pretty good looking man, pretty good looking zone, kind of a basic uh, way to play. Ball in air defense. Uh, AA players will play, ba play based on their ball in the air trait. Uh, we pretty much always want this to be either, I like by receiver, play receiver, or play ball. This just means like in a two-man catch situation, the corner is going to do, you know, he's going to either play the ball, he's going to play the receiver, or he's going to swat it, you know, whatever it might be. Honestly, swat ball is pretty good too, I think. Um, but but anyways, you can do any of these and they're fine. Cornerback matchups. This was something we used really in the beginning of the season. Um, you can actually, actually uh, match your corners based on different traits. For example, by overall, by speed, uh, by height, by route running, and by depth chart. Most people... Um, if you are going to be doing this, you might want to do it by speed. Um, that just means it's your fastest corners are going to match up over the fastest uh, DBs. This is good against like U trips. If you're facing someone that's running U trips, then you could run this, um, and it will help a lot with the alignment with some of the motion snaps uh, and things like that. But that's just you know something that you can use. It's really kind of a glitchy feature, and um, it's kind of um, it's it's not super simple to understand in my opinion. Um, because it can mess up some of your coverages if you just come out in it against a basic set. So I typically leave this on balanced. Option defense, this is a really important one. Um, I always recommend putting this on conservative. So the reason why, and, and again, I'm toggling these by just hitting right and left on the left joystick or the right or the left D-pad. Um, so option defense is on conservative 99.9% .9 of the time. The reason I like to do this is because um, this is this is basically going to essentially always contain the quarterback. So in a read option, the quarterback's reading the, the defensive end, 
if it's on conservative, that defensive end will always stand up and will force the quarterback to hand it off to the running back. And my theory is that I can blow up the running back run if my defensive end can contain the quarterback run. So um, aggressive, it would be the inverse of that. So the in an option situation, whether it be shovel option or read option, the lineman is always going to attack the, uh, the dive and leave the quarterback open. So that's just kind of the way that that goes. Balanced means it's just kind of a toss up. It's like, it, you, I like conservative. That way we just always know what's gonna happen. Strip ball and tackling, uh, we can put this on aggressive, but if you take a look here, you're gonna notice if you put it on an aggressive, it's a higher chance for a strip ball, but it's also a higher chance of a face mask penalty. And so I typically like to leave this on balance. If you put it on conservative, it says that there's lower break tackle chances but it also says that the AI will not attempt to strip the ball. So you're pretty much always gonna get the tackle, but you're never gonna get that strip animation. So I like to go on balance because then I can basically manually strip it with my user and I find that is the most effective. Uh, tackling, same thing. If I go on aggressive, um, aggressive tackling is actually not bad this year. Um, it's, it's been better in years past, but it's basically AI defenders are gonna attempt hit stick tackles for higher fumble chance. The con of this is that this is a higher chance of broken tackles and fake outs. Um, I typically just leave this on balance and just use your hit stick. But, um, you know, if you want to put it on aggressive, you can. Uh, the conservative approach is they're always going to tackle conservatively. The con of this is, um, it's, it's actually, it's interesting. The con of this is it increases chances of allowing yards after contact. So what that means is if you put your tackle on conservative and they truck you, then it's very likely that they're going to be able to push forward for a yard. So that's where you either want this to be on balance or aggressive, uh, in my opinion. Now, this is a really important, it's probably the most important feature in Madden 21. It's going to be in Madden 22 as well. And that's the zone drops. So um, what you'll see here is what zone drops means is it says, uh, basically, we can set our zone drops or set our zones to drop to a certain depth. So I could tell my flat zones to drop to five. I could tell my flat zones zones to drop to 30. Um, if you take a look at this, you'll see here that it says it overrides the drop depth for the hard flat, the cloud flat, and the soft squat zones. So any of those three zones, this will drop to that depth. So I personally, if you're going some in defense, if you're going to run match defense, then you would not really want to use zone drops. If you're going to run um, just kind of zone drop defense, which is something you can do. Um, this is where the term meta Mabel coverage comes from. Um, then you can zone drop them. The reason this is good is because if you put your flats on 30, they'll defend things like crossing routes and corner routes and things like that really well. So if I'm going to run zone drops, I will run the flats on 30. I'll run the curl flats on 10. Notice here that it says overrides the drop depth for the curl flat, quarter flat, and seam flat zones. So there's three specific purple zones. There's three specific flat zones. The three flat zones are a cloud flat, a soft squat, and a hard flat. The three specific uh, purple zones are curl flats, quarter flats, and seam flats. And then for hooks, um, I like to put these on 10. Same exact thing. Overrides the drop depth for hook curl, three rec hook, middle read zone, and hook um, and vertical hook zone. So any yellow zone, there's actually four of them in the game, hook curls, three red hooks, middle reads, and vertical hook zones, okay? So if it's a yellow zone, they're gonna, that, that's what we're, that's what hooks are. If it's a purple zone, that's what curl flat is. And if it's a light blue zone, that's what flats are, okay? So the one thing I will say is that this does not necessarily affect the deep blue zones in terms of the, the deep blue zones are still gonna drop to their specific depth. But what this will do is against match, like if you're running a match defense, like match quarters or cover four palms or cover three match, um, then what's going to happen is the match, This when you do this right here, um, it's going to basically cancel the match rules. And so those zones are going to drop as if they were um, drop zones, meaning like cover four drop or cover three sky or, you know, something like that. So that's kind of what, um, that's kind of what that means. One thing that's really important to know is if you see here at the top left, if I hit the R1 button, you see that I can go into my offensive coaching adjustments. A lot of people, myself included, like to put their ball carry on conservative. Whenever you're on the defensive side of the ball, if you have your ball carrier on conservative, whenever you get an interception or you get like a fumble recovery, 
then the player when he gets the ball he's he's going to like run really really slowly because he's running as like a quote-unquote conservative ball carrier um it's like a little bit of a glitch so the way that you can kind of cancel that out is whenever you shift to defense you can just put this back on balance another little trick that you can do is if you get as soon as you get the interception you just click left trigger like two or three times to kind of trigger an, a celebration animation and then it'll basically cancel that and you'll be able to run at full speed so that's just a little thing what i like about this is i can you know it's more so for offense like if i go if i get the ball first i go down and score touchdown or i get the ball first i get stopped i can work on my defensive adjustments while i'm doing offense so that's just a little tip about that okay so um what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come out in a standard um standard 335 wide uh defense just to kind of talk through um just to kind of talk through some of the basic adjustments this is you know and again you can apply this video to pretty much any defense any offense that you want to run um, the reason that i like 335 into 335 wide is because in madden 21 just like in madden 22 linebackers don't jump very well and so this allows us to get the best personnel possible on the field to be able to jump the most routes so Anyways, uh, we're going to come out in our, in our play now, and I'm going to go over all of the adjustments that you can do. So we're going to start with first, um, first we're going to start with defensive line adjustments. So um, actually, let's start with individual adjustments. So if I want to individually adjust anyone on the defensive line, so any of these front three guys right here, all I have to do um, is I have to double tap. So if you look here at the pre-play -pre menu, I, I click the right joystick in and it brought up this. You see here, if I double tap, if I if I do this right here, you see that this brings up my defensive line adjustments. All I did was I tapped the left D-pad. And then if you look at the bottom left, it says quick adjust. So if I hit it again, this is going to bring up my quick adjust, my individual adjustments. So then all I have to do is select the icon of the defender. Um, and what's cool is this in a formation, it's never going to change. So if I run 3-3-5 three, three, wide all season, then I already always know that this, you know, this is going to be the right icon. So, and again, I've written a book on three through five wide. If you want to get that defense, I think it's the best defense in the game. You can get that down in the description. So, um, so anyways, um, you see here, I can quick adjust. So I just hit uh, square to pick and Sue, and it's going to give me all of these different adjustments that I can do. Um, if I, if I go up on the left D pad, you see, I can put him in a seam flat. Um, so tap L um, left on the left D pad twice click the square button i could put him in a hard flat if i just hit the and i'm just following this this little prompt here you see it says if i hit down on the left uh stick then it'll put him in a vertical hook if i hit you know to the right on the left stick it'll put him in a curl flat if i hit um down on the left stick he's or uh, to the left on the left stick you see it'll put him in that zone if i flick the right joystick to the right It'll put him in a bluff blitz, which always, almost always will turn these guys into three rack hook zones, which is really, really cool because it allows you to get a three rack hook zone. Basically a bluff blitz, he's going to kind of fake like he's blitzing, and then he's going to kind of come into coverage. So that's how you can individually adjust your linemen. How you can mass, mass like you, you want to adjust all the defensive line as one, then you just do this. You bring up, you, you bring up the defensive line menu by hitting left on the D-pad. And then you see here that if I hit up on the left D-pad, I could spread them. If I hit down on the left D-pad, I can pinch them. You can also do uh, crashes where it says point of attack to the right. So I can slant them all to the right. I could crash them outside. And then if I ever want to reset anything, I can just hit left trigger. And you see it's going to clear to kind of reset it. Okay. So that's a, that's a little tip about that. And now let's move on to the linebackers. So the same thing, except the difference with the linebackers is instead of going... Uh, on left on the d-pad we're going to go right on the d-pad so this is going to bring up all of our linebackers what's cool about this is i can um if you look on the on the right side here i can quickly blitz all my linebackers if i want to so you see here i just all i did was flick the right joystick down at the bottom where it says blitz all and i just blitzed all of them and you see they're all in blitzes now so if i want to you know easily send pressure out of this cover four look i could do something like this and now i've got a six man blitz the other thing that you could do is I can also zone them all. So for example, if I audible down to my blitz three, um, you see how they're all blitzing? Well, I can just hit um, right on the right D-pad and flick the right joystick up. And now I'm in basically cover three, uh, cover three match essentially is how this defense is actually gonna practically play out. 
Um, and then the next thing I can do is I can blitz like individually. So if I only want to blitz the right side guy, all I got to do is hit right on the left D-pad, flick the right joystick to the right. You see it's going to blitz this guy right here. Same thing on the left. So with the 335 wide, it's a little bit different just because the linebackers are a little bit different, but that's kind of how you can do it. If we were in 335 normal, you'll see here, if I blitz on the left, you see um, it's actually flipped. So if I blitz left outside linebacker, technically the left outside linebacker in the defense is on the right side. So if I blitz the right outside linebacker, I'm actually blitzing on the left side. So as you can see right here, this is kind of the look that we create from this. So anyways, that's how you can kind of globally adjust the linebackers. And then the other thing you can do, obviously just like the defensive line, you can shift them to the left, you can spread them, you can pinch them, you can do all of those things. So for example, when I go down to Mike Blitz 3, I almost always like to spread my linebackers to help kind of keep quarterbacks in the pocket. Um, and then obviously your quick adjustments where you can adjust individual linebackers, the same thing applies as the defensive line. So we're gonna hit right on the right D-pad, we're gonna hit it again, and then I, you see here it's gonna bring up three different icons, so I just select the one that I want. So if I wanna you know, work on Levante David, I just hit the X button, and now it gives me all of these adjustments, very similar to adjustments to the defensive line. The major difference um, being, you know, some, I don't think there's honestly any difference, actually. The biggest one is who they can man coverage. This is another reason why I like 335 to 335 wide, because the 335, they're all middle linebackers, so they can cross man. So if I hit up on the right joystick, you see that I can man that linebacker up on anybody that I want. Whereas if I try to do the same thing to the defensive line, I can only man him up to two people, the two people that are on his side of the screen. So that's just a quick little pro tip that you can use. Um, I love to cross man my linebackers. I think it's such a good decision. Like if you're facing someone that's running a lot of crossing routes to the circle receiver, then you can just man him up on the circle receiver. Um, again, you know, all the different adjustments, you know, flip the right joystick to the right, you can put him in a bluff blitz. Um, the one thing you want to do is if you want to put your linebacker in a bluff blitz, you want to make sure um, that you're in a play that's going to, you know, make that reality. So if you look here, you see that he's I, he's in a blitz, even though he's in a bluff blitz. So just kind of watch. You see how he's just going to kind of sit there, and then he's going to kind of go in. So that's just like a weird thing. If they're already blitzing on the play, it's harder to put the linebackers in a bluff blitz, at least in my opinion. Just kind of my experience on that. But anyways, um, you can, the cool part is like, uh, the biggest difference too is like with the middle linebacker, if I have a middle linebacker on the field, I can put him into a middle third. So I could maybe, you know, do something like this, play a little bit extra underneath, and then just drop this guy into like a Tampa two type of situation. Um, so for the last part of the video, I wanna go over uh, coverage adjustments. The cool part about coverage adjustments is you're gonna notice that if you take a look here that the coverage um, based off the way the coverage is aligned, it can allow me to do different things. So as you see here, if I, the way I bring up the coverage menu is I hit the triangle button just like that. And as you can see, I can hit triangle and then I can hit to the left on the left D bed and it's going to show blitz. I can hit triangle. I could press. Um, this is really good for like, if you want to, so like when you come to cover three, you see how these guys are backed off. If I want to basically show this as like a man to man look but it's actually a cover three look, I could do something like this. And this is probably one of the best defenses in the, in the game this year because it looks like man, uh, it looks like man press, but it's actually, you know, cover three. So that's a, you know, that's how you can do that. If you want to individually adjust, you hit triangle, triangle, or if you're on Xbox, it'd be YY. And then you just select the icon and you see here, it brings up all these other things that you can do. So I could put, you know, I could put the safety into a, a deep half. I could, so I could create all kinds of different shells from one look. You see here, I could create a cover two look, um, and then I could adjust really, really quickly and create a, like a cover three cloud look. Or if I wanted to, I could create a, a cover four quarters type of look. So, you know, you just kind of play around with this and you'll learn, you know, what the, you know, what, you'll kind of get the, the thing down as far as like, you know, all right, these are the individual judgments. I could put them in inside third curl, flat hook curl. I could blitz my safeties. One of the best tips for stopping the run is to actually put these guys in spies. So you see here, I can put them in spies and they'll come down on the run really well. So that's how you quick adjust. And then the last thing that I think is most important is after every single play, um, you almost always want to pass commit. And the way that you do that is you basically hit the defensive keys. So if I ever want to audible, all I got to do is hit square. And you see, I can audible to anything in the nickel set. So I can audible to any of these formations if I want to. Um, the other thing is if I want to reset my play, so let's say I audible to something, I want to go back to what I was at, 
then all I have to do is hit square and it doesn't say it on the screen but if I just hit left trigger you see it'll reset everything okay it'll reset it back to the play that you came out in so last thing is if we want to I can also um, just adjust these guys manually by hitting the X button you see um, I'm on the it'll basically let me adjust whoever I'm on so that's one way you can do it I personally don't really ever use that but you can uh, and then the last thing, like I said, is the defensive keys. So the way you bring that up is by hitting the R1 button. And you see here that it lets you do a lot of things. One of the most popular things that I like to do is hit R, like like hit the R1 button and hit left, like hit down on the left D-pad. And that's going to pinch my defense. So it's going to pinch my, it's going to press my coverage. It's going to uh, pinch my D-line and pinch my linebackers. You see that I could also shift everything to the right. If I wanted to, I could shift everything to the left. I could spread my whole team. Uh, what spreading your whole team does, as you see, it backs off your, your secondary. When you shift them to the right or you shift them to the left, it doesn't actually affect your secondary, as you can see. So that's just a little trick right there that you can know. And then the other thing about the R1 keys, and this is the most important, is if you ever want to put your defensive ends or the people that are the outside most rushers on contains, all you do is hit R1, R1. So this is a good way to keep the quarterback in the pocket and then the other thing that you could do with this is you see at the bottom, I, hit, I can hit option quarterback by hitting the X button, or I can hit option running back. That's going to override the rules in your coaching adjustments, but that's what we're talking about, the coaching adjustments. So if you want to key on the running back, if he's on the option, then you can you can hit that. If the quarterback's going to, you want to keep on key on the, the quarterback, keeping the ball out of the option, then you can hit that button as well. And then lastly, the, the, this is the other thing that's really important. You see here on the right, I can guess the play. And we almost always, whenever I'm running defense, I always like to guess the pass. The reason why is because if they run play action, your players won't get sucked into animations. Your blitzes will come in a lot cleaner. Your zones will play a lot better. And against the run, your pursuit actually is a lot better when you pass commit. The other thing that you can do is you can run commit. The one problem with run committing, um, so like if I think they're going to run, I can run commit. So I can hit like R1 and flick the right joystick down and I'm going to run commit. The problem with that is if they don't run the ball, it's basically an automatic touchdown if they pass. So you only want to run commit like, you know, on fourth and inches or something when you know they're going to run the ball. And you can run commit in any direction. So, but anyways, that's pretty much the adjustments that you can do. Um, you can also show the x factors and it's a little bit different in like practice mode but if i wanted to show my x factors if i wanted to see what abilities he had then i could do that just by hitting the right trigger if i want to show my play art then i can hit left trigger and then obviously if you're in like head to head you can just flick the right joystick up but as you can see here it'll show your play art so you can see what you've got covered but that is how you uh pretty much quick adjust and kind of set everything up pre-snap so study this video and then whenever I say put the linebacker on a seam flat zone, now you know what I'm talking about. You would hit, like if I wanted to put uh, the linebacker on a seam flat out of this, then all I would do is I would hit R um, right on the D pad twice, bring up the right outside linebacker, which would be D the X button. And then I'm just gonna hit up on the left D pad. So boom, boom, boom. And you see how fast you, once you get good at this and once you study this a little bit, you can get these down really quick and it allows you to really be able to adjust well to what your opponent is doing. So in the future, we're gonna go over kind of what every zone does and and how you can actually, you know, what these zones are actually gonna do and what they're gonna take away for you. But this is the kind of foundational piece as far as like what, um, what are the core uh, controls uh, to quick adjusting. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you wanna get my complete defensive guide, you can get that down in the description. It is phenomenal and it's going to be really really good next year in Madden 22 in my opinion uh, so thanks for watching and if you want to get the defensive guide it's in the description